like to call the meeting of the City Council Ordinance Committee of December 9th, 2008 to order. Take a staff report first. Actually, Chair uh, Williams, we uh, don't have really a, a detailed report. We're just coming back with uh, the amendments or an amendment to uh, what we presented uh, a few weeks ago, uh, basically in response to the direction from the committee. And uh, we're ready to um, get into a, a Q&A if you have questions or I think you, know, you might want to take public comment first. Well, tr traditionally we'll take questions from the committee members first and then public comment. And okay. So please, uh, for members of the public that are here, please uh, fill out one of these white speaker slips and hand it to the gentleman in yellow. Any questions from committee members? Committee member Francisco. Thank you. Don, just for the benefit of people who are watching and who may not have seen the report, could you please summarize the changes between this version of the ordinance and the previous? The um, the major change is um, an, uh, a section or an additional language that actually is more specific as to where we would be permitted uh, under certain circumstances to actually post no parking, no RV parking signs. And what we uh, listed there were uh, 10 um, what we have called uh, more sensitive land uses. Uh, where we have uh, in the past experienced um, some problems, uh, but where we anticipate uh, where we might be seeing problems in the future. And the, and the land uses were basically in response to the conversation or the comments made by the committee members. And the primary one being we should be sensitive uh, um, to land uses where kids, um, children, families, uh, congregate, go to for services, for school, uh, uh, and that sort of thing. So, um, and I think at first blush, uh, people might think that well, we're we're just going to go out there and automatically just post signs in all of these places around every one of of these land uses throughout the city. That's not the intent. The intent is uh, to um, post the signage when we actually experience um, the problems, and the problems being uh, more related to the, um, the number of RVs that might be uh, congregated in any particular location, like we have seen in the two areas um, that we're concerned about right now. Um, criminal activity, complaints from neighbors, that kind of thing. So it's where it surfaces as, a, as an issue, as a problem, that's when we would be engaged in looking at um, uh, installing the signage. One other question. The ordinance would, would be enforceable in the areas outlined regardless of whether there's signage or not. Is that right? Steve, do you want to? Council Member Francisco, no, the, the vehicle code uh, the term it uses is adequate notice uh, in the form of signs. The, the general authority under the vehicle code is vehicle code section 22507, and it uses the term that the, these sorts of restrictions, these limited restrictions, particularly ones targeted at certain vehicles, uh, require the posting of adequate note, uh, signs with providing adequate notice. So for each block face, and, and I, we've had some discussion about uh, how we would do this, there's, there's never any intent on staff's part, anyone's part, to oversign the city. That's, that's a continuing concern of sign pollution, yet we've got to comply with the vehicle code, so that, and it says adequate notice. I think we're looking at, clearly, each block face where we intend these restrictions to apply uh, has to have some, some form of signage, and I think we're probably looking at um, two signs per block face or something like that. To, somewhat at the beginning and the end, if you will, or vice versa, of each block face uh, where, where this would be appropriate. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Mr. House. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, just so I really want to understand what we have in front of us, I want to just sort of walk through some of these things and just be sure I, I catch some of the nuances. And um, the first item that I uh, wanted to ask about, um, first of all, this is empowering the um, Public Works Director, but with the advice of the 
chief of police. So there's an advisory, there's a relationship there to initiate this. Um, and then the operant word appears to be may designate. So there's a discretionary moment there where on the advice of the police chief, the public works director has the discretion to designate a street or a portion of a street including specific block faces. So I want to just first of all confirm that there's that that discretion. It's not a mandate to designate all streets that are within 500 feet of these facilities. It's the, it creates the opportunity for, uh, with, an advi uh, uh, with advice, for the Public Works Director to um, designate those. Would you confirm that for me, please? Council Member House, yes, that's, that's correct. And, and I, I think you know, you recall that the first draft of this ordinance was, in a sense, broader. Uh, it, we were trying, I think, trying to avoid some of uh, stating some of our unstated uh, assumptions or fundamental basis that we had certain concerns about this in proximity to schools. For example, we had heard concerns from the neighborhood around Santa Barbara Junior High, and we had concerns about uh, community centers, certain, certain areas. Uh, rather than trying to be real specific about that, we had an ordinance that had it at the public works director's discretion with the advice of the chief of police and the, the the police department involvement is that this is somewhat of a public safety concern and we wanted them to have that input and and the the ordinance committee wasn't comfortable with that sort of being this broad discretion and we you know as staff I think we it, we knew it would be exercised in their professional judgment that it wasn't going to be overused in our opinion and it was uh, discretionary. It, what, no area was required to be signed, signed or restricted. It was when the public works director, basically the public works people and the, chief, and the police department said we were concerned about a particular area. But in any event, this ordinance now sort of is more specific about where that may be occurring. It is very permissive and I'd also like to mention in this regard that it says uh, may designate those streets where it is necessary to prohibit or restrict. So this could be an absolute prohibition on RV parking 24 hours a day, although I expect that that'll be fairly rare and that in, uh, restrictions are probably going to be more common and it may be a restriction from, say, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., where I know we've got certain areas where that's really the, the problem time, uh, an overabundance of these RVs uh, impacting businesses. So. It, that's another area where discretion would be exercised. Very good, I, and I appreciate this. And, and it's it's important for me to understand where these uh, what the intent of this is. And so, um, so the scope is to be able to prohibit or restrict. So there's some judgment there as well. Um, and specifically, not just the stopping, standing, or parking, but the purpose is to decrease the parking of an excessive number, which is sort of the previous language, and then the connected piece to provide for the and to provide for the public health and safety. Um, but of course, those it says here that those streets or street block faces um, would be designated, and that's the signage you're talking about. No, no, there's actually a separate subsection. Oh, okay, that's right. Separate okay. subsection that specifically requires the signage. Okay, very good. And then, um, so then I had a question about the list. Um, on the list, uh, coming obviously from the comments that we made at the last item here, I, I, uh, the schools and the uh, educational institutions, child care centers, family day care centers, um, group home, park, public library, museum, community center, social service center, go down the list, city, nonprofit recreational facility, community care facility, skilled nursing, health care facility, hospital, any homeless shelter, um, and then another one, any designated safe routes, to, safe route to schools, all those seem very consistent with what we had discussed at the last meeting and they're in the list. The two that I want to question are, um, uh, and the reason for which they're here, any church or other religious facility, we've had some members of the public ask us this question too, and the other one is any state highway or railroad right of way. So maybe we could start with the second one. Um, I know that we've had some uh, encampments along the railroad and in the the bushes near or around the state highways, but is that what's being referred to here? Because that didn't seem like that was something that we mentioned last time or that has even really come up as being problematic. So any comments to help us understand why that's on the list or if it needs to be there still? 
I can tell, Council, that we have had some problems on the railroad right away, especially over by Dwight Murphy Park, and we have signed that for no parking at any time. Um, but you know, understand that the railroad right away is private property owned by Union Pacific Railroad, mm -hmm. and they don't want anybody on their on their property at any time for any reason other than for a law enforcement standpoint or when we're doing a cleanup. So that actually covers their property, but we're talking about 500 feet away from that. So. Um, whereas all the rest of them have the connection to youth or to vulnerable people in our community and, and, and their vulnerability to that, this presence if it had an unlawful part to it. What, um, that, one, that one makes me wonder a little bit as to how that, the nexus there, and the other one is the church or, uh, or religious facility, and um, any direct experience with that or something that we should know about in terms of uh, the proclivity of them to use this or abuse that privilege on the street? In those areas. Uh, the one church that we have had uh, complaints from is Our Lady of Guadalupe, uh, and um, which is just you know a couple blocks from where you know the East Montecito Street uh, center of activity has largely occurred, um, and we have uh, heard from Father Raphael on uh, their experience, um, and uh, that facility, as you know, is not just uh, a church. Uh, it also houses um, uh, educational programs uh, during the day for kids, um, and on weekends um, they have family services uh, that are provided there. And um, so um, it kind of has a, a broader um, Okay, so that's what I wanted there. to hear. And then the um, on that last one, are we thinking about the areas like on the east side, where um, or on the west side rather, along the railroad tracks? We have some of our lower income neighborhoods that are right near the tracks, and that would be an area where the RVs might be parking excessively or something. Or I guess that one's still problematic for me. Well, and and part of this is that we're and it, when at least when I drew up a, an initial list of of what I thought might be um, areas that we w should focus on. We were, I was think, thinking forward um, where, you know, if we sign in certain areas where we're now having issues, where are they going to go? And based on the experience we've had to date, um, what we've seen is they tend to park, especially at night, um, adjacent to um, um, uses where there is not nighttime activity. And um, that's why in the industrial zone you don't really have a lot of people uh, hanging out there at night uh, or going there. Uh, I think East Montecito Street is a, an exception to that because of activities at La Casa and uh, certainly Our Lady of Guadalupe. But um, um, where we were primarily looking forward to um, in some of these cases to, to where where might going to push be. out to. Yes. Okay, then one last question. Um, that prohibition about the churches doesn't um, impact our safe parking program that actually is encouraging churches to participate, uh, right. correct? Because right. it seems like it, if it did, that would really harm our ability to appropriately get them off the street and on, into a parking lot or a place where it could be well managed. That's right. Uh, that, that ordinance provision, uh, it's in the zoning ordinance. Uh, it would not be affected by this. Um, through the new beginnings, uh, um, people could be parking in a church parking lot uh, as allowed uh, through that program and through the zoning ordinance. In fact, encouraged if they would make right. appropriate arrangements and manage right. it well. Yeah, just to be clear, this is on street parking restrictions versus <coughs> anything else we might be doing, whether it be in a city parking lot that we have in the program or the churches and nonprofit locations. Okay, so thank we're only you. restricting on street parking with this ordinance. Okay, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Those are my questions. A follow-up to Mr. House's question on Our Lady of Guadalupe. That, as a recreational uses, wouldn't that not qualify under the provision 5, any city or nonprofit recreational facility? Uh, yep. Church is a nonprofit. Yes, I, could, I think it would also qualify under number 4. Uh, and and um, although... <clears throat> It's not a school per se. Um, there are educational activities that also take place at Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, so I'm not. Ch I, I think the capitalized terms that uh, the city attorney has included in the list uh, are intended to refer to actual defined land uses uh, in the zoning ordinance when they're capitalized. So um, they are. They may or may not. 
qualify under uh, some of these, but I think under uh, number four um, and number five, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe uh, could well qualify. And it's staff's intention um, to immediately uh, deal with two areas that have particularly been problem areas. One is near the junior high, and the other is um, a, the lion's share of uh, East Montecito Street between west of Milpas and uh, a section of Calle Cesar Chavez. And we would, from day one, deal with that area as soon as this ordinance is passed and 30 days expire. Yes. Uh, and with the junior high, I would include the armory, uh, areas around the uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, and even a portion of the high school where we're, where we're now seeing uh, RVs parking. So it's, it's more ex than just the junior high. It's, it's the armory and portion of the senior high school campus. Would we, one of my concerns I have is that... Um, I, I was one of the, the ordinance committee members who felt strongly that we needed to constrain this, but I also feel like there is a remedy to, there there is a, the urgent need for a remedy um, for the areas that are particularly affected. Uh, and I have a little bit of a concern also with how long that will then take if we send this to council and council can't hear it till January and then we have 30 days after that, that it will take effect. Um, I believe people have been patient with us, and I really appreciate that. Um, could we recommend to council to do this as an urgency measure, um, given that there is a public safety concern? Um, I think believe that would qualify as an urgency measure um, when any any time health uh, and public welfare is affected. Um, and we could recommend it both as an urgency and as a non-urgency measure um, in case there weren't enough votes to pass it as an urgency measure. Uh, Chair Williams, look, uh, looking into that and, uh, and based on our discussion this morning, um, unless there are specific uh, noticing requirements that might be involved, um, and I'm not sure, Steve, if, if there are, um, I think if, if, if the, the ordinance before you... Uh, based on your action, does not require any significant changes. Um, <clears throat> I think we might be able to actually get this on the agenda for introduction next week and adoption by the 23rd. Uh, the only question I had was on uh, noticing, uh, but then the effective date would be uh, January 21st, I believe, um, about 30 days from the 23rd. Um, otherwise, um, you know, we could try for the 23rd for introduction and then adoption January 13th, but that would put off the effective date into to February. So I don't think you would have to uh, uh, classify it as an urgency matter. Uh, um, you know, um, I think we could do it if, if we move forward today. Okay. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to agree with Mr. Olson about that timing. I think we could do that. Um, there's no special noticing required for an urgency ordinance that I know of or an emergency ordinance. There is a need for findings and I believe an increased uh, vote requirement. Uh, and, and I'm it's a, I believe you, a four four fifths or 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 I think or it's just two -thirds. a super majority yeah. of two thirds, yeah. Um, in my experience with the city we have very been very reluctant to do emergency ordinances. It you know, it's the sort of thing where it should be fairly deliberate. And so I, I'm hesitate, I hesitate to recommend that here. Also, I, I believe it's going to take us some time before we can get signs up. And we can't do anything until we get signs up. So that 30-day period uh, before the ordinance is effective is going to be needed either way. Uh, also, I, I think it was our intention, at least it was mine, to recommend to the police department that we start issuing warnings and then we have a short period, like 30 days, of warning people that this is coming. So, um, as I say, I, I agree with Don, though, that we could conceivably get this introduced next Tuesday. And then my last question would be, if um, in looking at some of the ones that Mr. House had a concern about and that I have, um, 
it seems to me if it's our intention, if it's it's our interest to um, designate the majority of East Montecito west of Milpas as no RV parking, and the section of um, Calle Ciso Chavez um, that is north of the freeway or, or at least north of the mm, parking entrance to those facilities, um, all of those areas could be accomplished even if we took out um, subsections 7, 8, and 10. Does that make sense? That's correct. Okay. All right. Mr. Chair, I, I, um, on, on 8, the church, it, you know, this, even though it's only a parking restriction, is, is what lawyers would call a penal statute. It, it, it has to be fairly clear that it's telling people that they can't do something. Actually, subsection C is intended to, to, to accomplish that. The penal language. When signed or marked in accordance with state vehicle code requirements, no person shall. Uh, even though it's, a, it's only a parking fine, uh, we need to be real clear, and if we're going to, so it doesn't quite work, and it's not really legally appropriate to start citing someone, oh, you should have realized that Our Lady of Guadalupe actually mm -hmm. is something of a recreational center, a community <coughs> center. It's like, and it's just, you know, when you think of it, penal statutes have to be proved beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, and a judge is going to hold us to that, we want to stay with some pretty black and white lines if we can. And so when it comes to Our Lady of Guadalupe, for example, there's no question that's a church, and somebody would be hard-pressed to say, I didn't know that was a church or I didn't, you know, see the sign. So, so Steve, you would actually be recommending that, that um, uh, number eight, any church or other religious facility remain in the ordinance for... for yes, based, based on the question, do we have problems now with areas around churches, and then do we anticipate that it might spread to those areas, it, yeah, that's that's what I would say. I guess I'm trying to tease out when when uh, they're one of the only places in the city that actually wants these folks <laughs> are some of the churches, right? Um, so to designate those, um, I don't know. That's an interesting one. Okay, I will take. Public comment, unless there's more questions. Okay, um, Mr. House. It's kind of important. I, I wanted to um, understand um, the penalty that's associated with this. Um, so, if somebody violates this, if it were signed and they were actually cited, what would be the penalty? And the second component of that, what's the relief? So, um, we've heard now from staff a couple of times, not just this time, but before, that it's very likely that this will displace the RV dwellers from wherever they are now to other places in Santa Barbara so or someplace else wherever it might be and so um, if we were to um, have a penalty and we were to see them being displaced do we have an appropriate um, relationship with an organization or a place to be able to accommodate them at all and I'm going to just suggest that the safe parking program clearly is one of those but it's my understanding it doesn't have adequate capacity right now it, it it's structured to have adequate capacity, but for some reason it does, hasn't gotten more than 60-some. Well, actually, that's not bad. They've taken 60-some RVs off the street uh, each night. Um, but um, how, do we, how do we envision this working both in the, the penalty part and in the where we would direct them to perhaps to get involved in a positive program? So can we talk about that a little bit before we go on? Sure, sure. Let me start with the penalty phase. Uh, basically, it's a parking citation that these people would receive, and the current uh, fine is $41. If they have, I believe, five, four or five unpaid parking citations, um, their vehicle could be towed and then stored. You know, so we hope they get the one parking ticket. No, they're not supposed to park there and just move on and find someplace else to park. We know they're going to go someplace else in our community. Where they're going to go, we don't really know at this point in time, but we're, we'll find out you know, pretty shortly. I, you know, I don't think we have a problem, at least from the, the staff standpoint, the police department, public works, neighborhood improvement task force, with the one or two RVs parked in different areas in, in, the, in the town, as long as they're, you know, acting uh, appropriately. You know, I've seen them parked around our building, for example, and haven't seen an issue is where we're having the problem where we see a large group of them 
and what they're doing is spilling out in the public right away and even affecting the businesses like you'll be hearing later on today and you heard at the last ordinance committee meeting. Um, you know, certainly we'll be working with new beginnings. We have been doing that all along. We, we have the safe um, uh, parking program. Uh, we have a number of people who are participating in it. When we have a problem, like we had the problem over in, in these two areas that we've been talking about, and we asked them to go make contact with these people. And a lot of them refuse to answer the door or refuse to be a part of the program because they don't want to participate and abide by the rules that have been set uh, forth. You know, we'll continue to work with Gary Linker and his staff to see if there was a way to improve or increase the, uh, the availability of parking in that program. But the people who you know, or need have to be willing to participate and follow the rules that are set forth in the program. Okay, that's good. Thanks. Uh, my last question is just clarification. The measurements that I received for the block face of uh, East Montecito Street uh, west of, or East Montecito Street west of uh, Calle Cesar Chavez is 750 feet. However, the entire block face would be affected by this because there is a facility mid-block that qualifies as a uh, community care facility. Is that, is that the case? Uh, yes, there are actually in that neighborhood uh, four or five uh, sensitive land uses that uh, would um, extend the area that would theoretically be covered by signage. Yeah. Thank you. I'll take public comment, uh, beginning uh, with Mr. Lewis Weeder. Did I get this that right this time? <laughs> Wider. The types. Um, as you just mentioned, this will also cover Olive Street because there are five uses. I have two uses right in my property. One of my tenants is the State of California Department of Rehabilitation. Uh, their function, they've been there nine years, their function is the employment and uh, provide employment and independence for Californians with disabilities and people with disabilities come to their site. It's a full ADA site. Adjacent to them is the Tri-Counties Regional Center, which is also a California agency, and they deal with developmentally disabled uh, individuals. Uh, there's also a school. There's a school on Gutierrez, uh, El Puente, so we have to provide a safe route for the children to go to that school. And um, so I I never thought of it until you brought it up, uh, Councilman Williams, but there are five uses that are mentioned in here that are right in that area besides businesses. Uh, I, the, the, the issue of giving people five tickets before you, you tow them seems to me to be a little excessive. I would think that they'd get the message after less than five, but I leave that up to you and the police department and the uh, the city uh, uh, departments that deal with that. Uh, this really, I'm just here to commend you and, and hope you will pass this and take it to the city council. But I agree with uh, Councilman House, this is not a, a final solution in a way that these vehicles will go elsewhere. And I would like to suggest that uh, uh, Roger Hero, whom I think you've appointed or has, has a position to help solve the homeless problem in Santa Barbara, this is a homeless problem. It's just that these people are fortunate enough not to have to live in the bushes and the streets. They have a wrecked vehicle or, or some other type of vehicle. And it's really, therefore, low-cost housing. And perhaps Roger, working with New Beginnings and Gary Linker, can find a location where a park, a wrecked vehicle park, can be developed, perhaps on city land. But I, I would think building pads is not an expensive proposition. And therefore, the people with these vehicles can live there in their vehicles and what have you. 
have the amenities and the security that they need and work towards solving the problem for the city. That's my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Lanny Ebenstein, followed by Allison Emmer. Members of the Ordinance Committee, uh, I'd also like to encourage you to approve the uh, proposed ordinance that's before you and to forward it on to the City Council. I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, I was going to preface my comments to, with something to the effect that um, there's many people who've been homeless, have friends who are homeless, um, have family members who are, who have been homeless. So these aren't issues that for example, you would expect, well, some person wouldn't have familiarity with that and someone else would in terms of these are issues that many people are personally involved with in one way or another or have been. And um, that's really what motivates my comments to you is that um, I think that saying that homeless people are going to live in recreational vehicles on city streets is, is too low a standard in terms of our society can do better than that. Uh, I think that in the past, perhaps we have done better than that, and it's something that uh, I, I don't think it's a step toward assisting people who are homeless to say that encampments and other things along those lines can be set up along uh, public city streets, and, and that's not what public city streets were made for in terms of they had a different purpose in mind from, from many perspectives, both with respect to their uh, design, but also with respect to uh, the uses adjacent to them, businesses, schools, other public purposes. So I, I think it's inappropriate. The, um, with respect to the idea of adding to the city's uh, number of uh, uh, places that are available for uh, RVs, I think that's something that should be considered in the appropriate location. That That's a long-term discussion, uh, and, and I'm sure there will be many opinions on that issue uh, from, from a number of, of perspectives, all of which merit consideration and, and, and thoughtful consideration. And uh, but, but the issue before you today is whether or not this would be a step in the right direction. I believe that it would. I believe there's a good chance the issue will come back to you in any event at some point in time, but I think this is a step in the right direction, and I encourage you to, uh, to approve the uh, ordinance before you today. Thank you. Thank you. Allison Emmer, followed by Brian Gannon. Gannon? Hi. Um, I've addressed the concerns. I'm, I'm here on behalf of Commission Junction, which is a subsidiary of ValueClick, Inc. Uh, we have employee concerns of public health and safety in the area. There is a huge concentration. We're on Montecito Street, 530 East Montecito Street. I come as an employee concern, but I also come as an attorney on behalf of the company concerned for our employees. We are assessing costs right now of the company, and um, we're assessing our lease right now, should we stay in Santa Barbara. So I hope this ordinance is passed so we can stay in Santa Barbara, and I appreciate your efforts, so thank you. Brian Gagnon, followed by Gary Linker. All right, so Brian passes, so Gary, you're up. Followed by Steve Americaner. Thank you, um, Councilman Williams, uh, Councilman House, Councilman uh, Francisco. I appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of you today. Um, as a result of the last meeting that we held, I went back to my staff and discussed the issue of what they knew about this issue on East Montecito Street. We estimate that there are about 15 uh, RV vehicles that frequent that area in some consistency, 12 of whom are individuals who are so poor that they are unable to meet the economic requirements of being in our program, which quite simply are um, proper insurance, uh, current tags, and current driver's licenses. Those are the three requirements to be in our program. Um, it is true that we are at capacity and have a waiting list. Uh, we've uh, worked really hard since our last meeting, and we've opened up eight additional spaces, um, six um, at the United Way, uh, two at Trinity uh, Church on State Street. They should be commended for their involvement in our program. We have other leads as well. We're working on um, other agencies that may step up and work with us. But it is true we um, are at capacity. But we believe that if we had uh, the spaces, uh, and by the way, uh, I've also secured an additional $1,500 in funding for our micro loan program. So we have money now to loan individuals who would be willing to come into our program and who could uh, then become eligible by meeting our requirements. So that economic uh, factor has been somewhat eliminated. So what we're lacking are spaces. 
So we don't have to wait till January to, we think, make an impact in this problem if we can find additional spaces. Um, the program has worked very well um, at the city lots that we currently have, at the county lot that we currently have. If we could expand those spaces, if we could find some additional spaces, and we've been working with uh, Don Olson from the city, looking at possible sites, if we can open up some sites in the next couple of weeks, uh, we can make a big impact on this problem even before this ordinance, if you pass it, were to be followed. Uh, relative to a 24-7 uh, lot, uh, it's a great idea. It's not a new idea. Uh, we've tossed it around for quite some time. We've kind of come to uh, uh, a, 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 de a block, if you will, or a detour, and have not been able to find a place that somebody wouldn't have a major objection to and would be in our way. Um, I do have a space right now I'm looking at out in Goleta that might be an option for us. It's not on city land, but it could be a possibility. And Rob Pearson and I are working on an area, uh, a, a current uh, park that could be um, expanded or transferred into an RV park. So we're working on that front. I want you to know that. But um, we haven't had success in securing something that we are comfortable um, in knowing uh, could create the uh, reality that um, – Mr. Weider was uh, suggesting, but we are working on that as well. So I just want to give you that update, let you know that we can move forward on this uh, with or without an ordinance if we can get a little bit more uh, umph from the city and maybe some umph to the county. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Linker, uh, if I may. Mr. House. Um, yes, uh, Mr. Linker, the, uh, my understanding is your program um, has as one of its uh, primary goals the transition to permanent housing for those who could qualify, and you've been successful in some cases in assisting people in making that that uh, that, that bridge over into a secure and um, uh, permanent place to live. Is that correct? Am I? Yeah, we did. We did uh, have success last year in placing 42 people into housing. Um, Mr. Ebenstein is correct. It's not ideal to live in a vehicle. Uh, I would submit to him it's better than living in a shelter. Um, and so, uh, for some people, it has become um, for them a viable way of, of living. Uh, we can't dictate to people how they have to live their lives. On the other hand, if they're causing a problem and a disturbance in our community, that's a problem. So yes, we like to um, encourage our people uh, living in vehicles to consider uh, permanent housing. We assist them in Section 8 applications. We have an excellent relationship with the Housing Authority in getting them um, on the list and, and getting them uh, evaluated. Uh, and we have been able to uh, house people, and that is the eventual goal of our program. Well, you're also providing um, access to services for those who are, would otherwise not have it. And um, so I commend you for that and for adding the supply that you've done so far. I just wanted to ask you, it seems like the key to the success so far has been really good and tight management um, in terms of holding them to account for the rules of the program and also for getting their vehicles up the code. And, um, and when we look at the possibility of a... a, of a um, a location off street that might be like an RV park or something like that. It seems that management, really good management, would be a key to its success as well. Um, there's a place where we used to have um, a, a, um, a mobile home park that got really derelict and has been pretty much scoured to the ground, and the pads are still there next to the freeway over on Punta Gorda, I think. And I don't know if that's been explored, but cle clearly, even if that were to be considered, it would have to be under really rigorous and excellent management um, to to make sure it wasn't a problem for the neighbors. And um, are you is your organization prepared to continue or to do that kind of a management and ongoing work with the people that would be involved in in either on street or off street? There are, fortunately, people interested in our community who do have some resources who would be willing to assist us along with the city in creating such a structure a program. And were we to have 30 or 40 spaces or lots or whatever available to people, we would commit staff to uh, oversee that program uh, on an ongoing basis. So, yes, we're willing to take that next step and make that happen. Thank you, Dr. Linker. And, Dr. Linker, one other thing, because it's I, I think it was an important one, to, to Lanny's point that – that we don't want this to sort of be a permanent situation. How can you numerically let us know how many people you've placed in housing through your program? Uh, last year we placed 42. Um, Pretty good. For and uh, an additional, uh, I think, 12 or so were uh, uh, gainfully employed through our efforts. So we have our two outreach workers who work on both those fronts to provide those kind of services. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Langer. Stephen Mariconner, followed by Bob Flowers. Chair Williams, members of the committee, my name is Steve Americana. I'm with the Brownstein Hyatt Law Firm, and I'm here today representing the uh, Santa Barbara Business Center, 
which has a number of the tenants that uh, you have heard from and will hear from uh, in the room today. Uh, we have nine tenants all together, and I think you heard from a number of them at your last meeting as well. Uh, we also commend the uh, staff and the ordinance committee for uh, moving forward with this ordinance. We think that this is a good first step. It is, uh, by as reflected in the comments that you've all made, not a solution. There, there are there's a broader program or suite of programs that's going to be needed to actually solve the problem. Uh, but with respect to the immediate issue of uh, people feeling safe on the streets, of businesses feeling that they are uh, in the right place and in the right community, this we think is a good response. Uh, we're also encouraged by your thoughts of moving quickly with it and bringing it to the City Council next week and adopting it immediately. Uh, we think that the 30-day waiting period can be profitably used, as your City Attorney has suggested, in, in manufacturing and putting up the signs and giving people warnings and starting the actual ticketing at the end of 30 days. Uh, we think the posting of signs and the, active, uh, the activity in the neighborhood will already begin to uh, address the problem and people will begin to look for other, other places to go. And so we encourage you to do that. We think that's a very good solution. So, so thank you for your support. Uh, it's very important to the, health, the economic health of our community uh, as well as our uh, efforts to deal compassionately with this problem. Thank you. So the last speaker will be Bob Flowers. Mr. Flowers. Councilman Williams, uh, Councilman House, Councilman Francisco. I'd just like also to commend the committee. I think this is, uh, I'm a, our firm is a tenant in the same area, and we've been affected. I've called the police a number of times and talked to a couple of council persons, and I, I believe this is a very good first step. appreciate the effort you put into it and support it entirely. And I also agree that the problem, you know, isn't going to go away. We have to continue to work. Uh, to solve it, to help these people, but to get them in a place that's not on a public street. Uh, we have employees that have witnessed, I don't even want to go into the details, of people, you know, the results of people living without sanitary facilities, concerns uh, at night, uh, are some are people leaving late and wondering what would go on. Also, there's, there's just the fact that you have poor visibility, traffic hazards, it's, it's, you're doing a good thing. Uh, I appreciate the effort and would lend support to, to further efforts uh, around the community to see what we can do to to solve the problem, help these people. And I appreciate those that are in the city here that have spoken and are really doing that. So thank you again for your, for your efforts. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. And it's to the committee. Anybody want to start us off or... Uh, Mr. House. Uh, yes, um, I, I think that this is uh, an improvement over what we had before us before. Um, uh, I will um, ask that, uh, I mean, if I'm the one that makes the motion, I'll, I'll do it, or if somebody else does, um, that we also add to our motion a, uh, uh, a recommendation to the City Council to um, uh, do what we can to expand the supply of RV parking spaces that are available in the safe parking program or uh, some other well-managed program uh, that, uh, that, that's a, that there's a complementary component here. I'm not saying that it's uh, tied to the actual implementation of the ordinance. We don't want to hold that up. On the other hand, there may be things the city can do or to encourage that would, um, that would help us not just bulge the issue the problem out to somebody else's neighborhood. It's likely, very likely, that displacement will happen within our south coast area, um, quite likely within the city of Santa Barbara, and then we would hear from another neighborhood, and maybe one that's not covered by this list of uh, nine or ten uh, requirements. Um, so I believe that the success of this is that it's the complementary piece, it's the enforcement piece, of a, a program that it has also a, uh, an opportunity for those who want to be responsible and step up, even with the loans, to assist them to a movement towards permanent housing. And those things go hand in glove. So um, that's something I'll be looking forward to out of our, our discussion today. But I really want to thank staff for being responsive to our concerns from the last uh, meeting. Maybe there's more to go, but uh, I, I really thank you very much for that. Mr. Francisco. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would have no objection to adding a recommendation along with this uh, ordinance that the full council consider ways in which we could expand the safe parking problem. That's, that's fine. Um, 
a fundamental problem here that we're trying to solve with this ordinance and that, as everyone said, we, we won't solve completely today. The fundamental problem is it, it is illegal to live in the public right of way. Uh, but that's a law that, for various reasons, including certain court rulings, we've been um, unable to enforce very effectively. And so, though it's true that this ordinance by itself will not solve all problems, and it may indeed displace some people into other neighborhoods, hopefully at least more scattered, um, it is a good step in the right direction. Um, so I've, I fully support the ordinances before us, and, I'm, and I also would like to thank staff for all the hard work that they've done to craft this ordinance. I think it's, it's very well done, and I, I support it. I uh, do want to bring up the details that were talked up before, and I also want to um, specifically address the idea that um, uh, such a large employer in Santa Barbara um, as Commission Junction would be considering mm, moving on. Um, I'd like to add a recommendation to Council that we do a check-in um, with staff after three months to see how effective um, this has been. Um, because I think that would be appropriate um, uh, to see if we are taking a strong enough um, uh, measures. Uh, at the same time, I don't want to overreach, and I feel like you guys came up with a little bit, just slightly too long of a laundry list, um, because I, I'm at a loss actually to figure out what is not covered um, by this laundry list <laughs> throughout the city. Um, uh, so I, for, first of all, don't think that we should include uh, 10. Um, underneath a state highway or in a railroad right-of-way is already illegal and enforceable. Uh, and, and this would not make it any more enforceable than it already is, in my opinion. Uh, and the 500-foot buffer from those things makes no sense to me. Um, uh, the same thing goes, in my mind, for seven, a homeless shelter, uh, and eight, uh, I believe that what we should do is um, uh, issue those warnings, um, uh, treat Our Lady of Guadalupe as a recreational facility, which it is, and make sure that the people parking in the area know that it's a recreational facility so that if it's challenged, that we can survive challenge. Um, I believe that if we do do a check-in after three months and, and the 500 foot is not big enough or if the laundry list is something that we're missing, that we'll be able to address that in, in three months. I just think that sometimes we think that if we include everything, that it, that'll cover everything and they'll just go away. These folks aren't going to go away. And so if we um, um, flush them from areas that are on this list but are not in our primary interest, for me it is in our primary interest to, to designate um, most of East Montecito Street does not be able to have the parking. But I'm not sure if, um, uh, you know, there aren't areas on the fringes um, uh, of this area or closer to, you know, Quarantina, close, close to the freeway by the Marburg facility where it is really that dysfunctional. Um, uh, and I know if we flush them from that area, then what they're going to do is go back to residential neighborhoods or elsewhere where there might be additional problems. And so um, I, I, for, I, I just w would hope that this committee would, would recommend and bring this to council, um, but uh, to strip um, uh, 7, 8, and 10, because all the areas that we want to affect um, would be well within 500 feet of um, uh, 1, 2, 4, four 5, 6, um, and 9. Mr. Francisco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's important to remember that this is an ordinance for the purpose of public safety and also that it's a discretionary, it's discretionary in how it will be enforced, that the, the public works director and the chief of police will be looking at recommendations before any areas are signed. Um, I think we have to keep in mind, therefore, the city attorney's comment that we need to clearly designate places so that there's no possibility of a challenge of the correctness uh, when it comes to enforcement. And so, for instance, churches clearly fall within, uh, under the rubric of 
child and family serving institutions. And so in those cases where RVs parking near a church are in the judgment of the public works director and the chief of police a are a problem, then we need to be able to enforce in that area. It doesn't mean that necessarily every church in the city is going to have one of these signs out front. Um, equally with, with, uh, uh, with the other ones that you mentioned, uh, for instance, the state highway and railroad right-of-way, certainly it's illegal to park there now, but the problem isn't it's illegal to live on the street anywhere in the city of Santa Barbara, but we haven't been able to do anything about it. What this ordinance, in my mind, is really about is giving the police department an enforcement tool where we see a problem, where public works and the police department sees a problem. This will give them a tool that we currently lack to enforce the law. So I just want to keep in mind that this two very important things. This is, this is an ordinance that will be used with discretion. It does not automatically mean that every place that falls on this list is going to be signed. What it means is when a specific place that is in this list is a, is a, a site of problems, a site of concern, then we have the tool to enforce the law there. So I would personally highly recommend that we keep everything that's currently on here uh, and see how things go. If it turns out to be a problem, we look at it later. And I think your suggestion of staff looking at this, doing a survey, coming back three months later, telling us how it's working is an excellent one. Um, but I would move that we follow a staff recommendation and forward this ordinance to the full council. I do not hear a second, um, and I, I would, I'd like to respond to um, to one of those. I guess I'm persuadable on the church or religious facility. I think you make a good point on that. Um, uh, do, I do not think it is um, comparable on a state highway or railroad road right of way. The reason why, um, just so for background, the reason why we are unable to enforce the fact that it's illegal to sleep in a car is because you some an officer would needs to knock on on the car or RV and someone actually needs to answer it in order to enforce it on the other hand if you're in the railroad right of way you can be towed immediately no matter what you don't need six tickets you don't need anything um, so there's a large difference between that and I, I to me to put that to, to put that in there is at um, best duplicative and at worst overstretching because what it does do is it also affects some of the only and I I believe that there's actually very little of the city where um, this does not create a problem but it actually does exclude the few places where it doesn't create a problem and I would take for example um, that on quarantina close to the um, tr uh, close to the uh, recycling facility uh, that is um, a place where it creates relatively minor issues, um, par possibly because of the local employers having a real role in what goes on there, uh, meaning Marburg, um, but also because of uh, very little proximity to um, offices or to uh, residential areas. So um, I'm, I'm insistent uh, that I'm not going to vote for anything that doesn't st strip 10 out, and I would argue um, uh, 7 uh, as well because of the proximity, the unintended consequences of 500 feet um, being stretching into the, those few areas that um, this is relatively functional. Um, well, I'll just try. I'll just try a motion then. I'll. Oh, sorry, Mr. House. <laughs> Thought I'd try. Here, um, so let's just focus in, in on a motion that uh, that leaves ten off the table for now. And um, again, three months from now, we'll take a look at it. If we, we find that we've got a problem that's really um, presenting itself in the, um, I mean, a serious problem that we can't enforce, that's in the an area that's not covered by these things, I'm sure we're going to be 
talking about it again as well. But we really want to see what we can do with the areas that have been addressed to us here, and that's covered by everything all the way down to nine, really, except for um, number 10, which seems to me a little bit spurious at this point. So I move the staff recommendation along with um, a recommendation to the City Council to expand the supply or to do what we can to expand the supply of RV parking spaces available in the safe parking program and other well or and other well-managed programs, and then um, with a three-month check-in, and that's it for now. Say, okay, but you're, Mr. House. I didn't hear you say anything about removing number ten. I meant, I yeah, that was the preface. Um, it is the staff recommendation, except for item ten in the list. I'll second that. Can we include a three-month check-in uh, back to? I have to put that. I, I really want to make yeah. sure that that's this part of the is working. Motion. Mr. Uh, Chair, do you want the check into the full council or to come back to the ordinance committee? Uh, as long as the council's okay with it, uh, back to the ordinance committee, I think this is arcane enough that they aren't going to want to spend an hour and a half, and we're masochists, I guess, and we're willing to do that. So back to the ordinance. Committee. Come back to ordinance in three months. That would be good. So there is a motion and a second. Uh, would there like to be any discussion on the motion? No. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? It's a unanimous recommendation. Thanks to everybody who came to talk to us. Thank you. This. Thank you very much.